Hi, I'm Terry David Mulligan. And I'm Lynn McNamara. And boy, considering our title, that was then and this is now, do I have a surprise for you? What kind of surprise is that, Lynn? Roll the tape. Oh, no. It was a hard day's night. We had a ticket to ride. But tomorrow never knew. It was hello. Goodbye. We carried on. On down the track. We've come so far. Now here we are. Looking back. A million names. A million faces. From different I'm your host for the next six weeks. I'm Terry David Mulligan. <laughs> they said they burned that tape. Come on. That was definitely then, and this is now. Cute mutton chops, Terry. Over the next two months, we're going to turn back the clock on some of BC's most interesting and colorful personalities of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I'll get even, you know that. I know, I know. We'll relive memories with the help of vintage film stock and photographs, share highlights and regrets, anecdotes, and personal moments. And in the process, we hope you get a rare insight into our guests, which perhaps you've never had before. You want variety? Well, check out tonight's lineup. I'll talk with Al Prowler, Jack Cullen, also Nancy Green Rain, and Ernie Prentice. And I get a chance to talk with flying Phil Gallardi and, of course, Howie Vickers, former lead singer of the classics and the collectors. Let's start with one of the pioneers of early television. Ernie Prentice arrived in Vancouver from Winnipeg in 1936, and despite his complete lack of musical training, he began singing on radio. Later on CBC television, he sang with Juliet, Ricky Hislop, and Terry Dale. His big success, though, was on another CBC network television program called Lolly Too Dumb. On that show, he sang with Vancouver soprano Betty Phillips. Gene Lawrence, the producer of Lolly Too Dumb, had the original idea for the show. Gene had an idea. Uh, of, of a, of a fill-in for three half-hour spots. Now, the half-hour spots were in the National Network. Woo. National Network. To put on three half-hour folk songs and call it Lolly Tootum. I said, that's dumb. <laughs> Too dumb. Well, <laughs> very dumb. Very good, Lynn. <laughs> Lolly, very dumb. <laughs> because who's going to watch half an hour folk songs, you know? Particularly with us on it. And I meant that. <laughs> and it sounds like a kid's program, Nee Nee Nanny Noonie. How did you meet Betty? Oh, I met, actually met Betty through John Emerson. John Emerson uh, who did a tremendous amount of good work in, uh, in uh, helping and assisting uh, artists. And I was doing um, shows with her, conventions and, and so forth, through John would book singers and so on. And, um, and then we just naturally worked together. We worked together very well. I liked Betty. Betty, we, we spelled each other off. And uh, then along came the Lolly Tootum, and it was just a matter of continuing on an association in a different media. Well, I wanted to tell you about Betty Phillips there. Uh, it's cute. Uh, I said, I had a cute little thing happen. I was downtown, and little old ladies, oh, there were always little old ladies, you know, there were little old ladies. And I heard this voice said, Mr. Prentice. And said, Hello. And this little old lady looked up at me, and she said, my husband and I have a bet on. We're watching you on your Lolly Tudum program. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> said, you and Betty are married, aren't you? May I bet, I bet five dollars that you're married. And he said, no, you aren't. I said, well, you've lost. I said, oh, but you're engaged, aren't you? They, they, I, said, I said, what do they want? It's like my dentist used to watch and say, your teeth look good. See? Don't you ever listen to the show? I do songs on the show, you know? Or my barbers need a haircut. I sing songs. What did I, what did I sing last week, eh? Uh, see, you don't, why don't you listen? Why don't you stop watching my teeth? And so I said, you lost your bet. Unbelievable. You do you know? have any, any regrets at all about your career? Not, well, regrets, yes, I have a, reg well, I shouldn't say regrets because there's no point to, no point saying what, what, case or uh, uh, what we should have done possibly to gain a larger audience was for Betty and I to have left Vancouver and gone back east as a stepping stone for some other place. See, the prophet is without honor in his own land, and I've heard this so many times, and you must encourage young artists and say, hey, you're good, we want you. 
uh, say, hey, you're good. What are you doing here? Where is here? Here is Canada. Here is Canada. We need, we, need a, we need a national unity by recognizing the fact that we are individuals. We don't have to go any, any place else to become that way. So let us keep the people here. Let us create a climate here. Other people are coming up here and they're calling this Hollywood North. Never mind Hollywood North. Just call it Vancouver, right? That's right. And regrets? No. Um, I, uh, well, I got a philosophy. Uh, you only go to the living room once, enjoy the furniture. Right? What do you think was the highlight of your career? When were you the happiest in your career? That's impossible to answer that because it's like saying, I mean this sincerely, it's like saying, what's your favorite song? The moment is the most important thing. My father used to say to me, the most important note, read the song through before you sing it, he was part of my training, and the most important note you're on is the one you're on at the moment. Don't anticipate and forget your mistakes, they're gone. And so this is what I say, it's what you're doing right now. Who knows how much more time you got? How much more time you got right now? About a minute, haven't you? None. That's what I mean. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lynn, it's a it pleasure. Great. Keep up the good work, McNamara. Thank and your you. band. <laughs> so long from Lolly <laughs> Tudor. And I don't care. Jimmy Crack Cord. And I don't care. Jimmy Crack Cord. And I don't care. My man. Say the name Phil Gallardi and the response will usually be, oh yeah, Flying Phil. Under W.A.C. Bennett, B.C.'s Highways Minister, left his mark on the people and the politics of this province. He was really two people. To the province, he was the volatile Highways Minister. In his hometown of Kamloops, he was the Minister of Calvary Temple. He always spoke his mind, which often got him into trouble. But trouble or not, there's never been anyone quite like Flying Phil Gallardi. I asked him where he got his fighting spirit and his philosophy of life from. The important thing is, is the fact that God created everybody equal and God made provision for everybody to be able to enjoy whatever you were created for. And one of the tragedies is that we don't seem to realize that. And the whole purpose of life is to be able to enjoy. But there again, so few people seem to know um, how to attack life and how to enjoy life and how to appreciate life and what life is all about. Well, you attacked life. I mean, you, you attacked it uh, as though you were permanently hungry and couldn't get quite enough of it. <laughs> yeah, you mean in a, in a matter of enjoying it? Yeah, that's right. Certainly. Uh, and and uh, not only that, but if you start from the right base, the old Swede says, how can I yump when there's no place to stood? <laughs> well, if you have a proper base, then you can go anywhere. If you establish yourself on a proper premise, then you can go anywhere. And if we realize today that it isn't how much you can get, it's how much you can give. And the more you give, the more you get. Right from the first time I ever heard you, you seemed to know what you were going to do and how you wanted to do it, which seems to me must have come from your family upbringing. Who was the big influence there? The, the, the most powerful influence that, that I had in my life was um, a, a little woman <laughs> that, was, that was just around four feet tall, <laughs> weighed about 90 pounds. I could pick her up when I was 10 years of age and pack her around. And uh, it was my mother. She couldn't, she was from it, from Italy. My father and mother emigrated from Italy. And uh, uh, my mother couldn't read and she couldn't write. But she had more wisdom in her little finger than most uh, professors and intellectuals have in all the books that they could read in the world. And she taught me more. She understood me more than any, anybody understood me. And uh, I, uh, I learned 99% uh, of all the philosophy that I have ever had came from the ingenuity and the wisdom of that mother. There's so much has gone on. You have a very full life. Let's mm. face it, you've been a very lucky man in that respect. Mm. What was the best moment, do you think, that combined the best of everything? 
I can't, I'll tell you what, what I enjoyed, perhaps more than anything else that I've ever done. Building highways came natural to me because I, I, I cut my teeth on a, on a bulldozer. The province of British Columbia, in the, in the constructing of all great sections of highway, have always had an opening, an official opening, and this has been done by all of the provinces. And uh, in BC, we are now completing the construction of the Rogers Pass section of the Trans-Canada Highway. Therefore, British Columbia is having an official opening for our part of the Rogers Pass route. For 80 years, everybody said, couldn't be done, couldn't be done. And any 15 cent boy, farmer boy, like I am, could have built the Rogers Pass. Uh, way back in the days when the CPR got out of there, why did they get out of there? All we did was build cement tunnels at the base of the mountain where the avalanches came down so that when the automobiles were driving over the highway, the snow was going over the top. Yeah. I, I'll never forget Diefenbaker when we when we, uh, when we uh, cut the ribbon, for because that was the last link in, yep. in the highway. And Deef came over to me and he said, Phil, I wonder how come this highway, uh, I've never been on a highway that's more scenic or more beautiful. I said, Deef, this is one of the most scenic highways in the world. And he said to me, how come this wasn't done 80 years ago or 75 years ago? I said, Deef, that's simple. What do you mean it's simple? I said, Phil Gillardi wasn't born 75 years ago. <laughs> I could still see him throw his head back and laugh. He roared for <laughs> must have been 10 minutes. A quick update on Ernie. He's been acting in J.J. Starbuck and Wise Guy. And nowadays, Flying Phil sits on the boards of five Vancouver corporations and preaches in Kamloops on the weekend.